G'day, welcome to Partakers and our Easter 2018 series where we are looking at the death and resurrection of that most extraordinary man of history, Jesus Christ. So what can we say finally? We know that Jesus still meets people today. As we've seen, the good news is that Jesus is still living. He is alive. The rest of the four Gospels and the beginning of the book of Acts tell us a little more of what Jesus did before he ascended into the heavens back to the right hand of the Father. Jesus still meets with people today. How does he do this? Jesus walks with us wherever we go and in particular in the darkest periods of our life. Just as he did with the two people on the road to Emmaus, he walks with those who proclaim to follow him. Jesus speaks whenever the Bible is faithfully preached and read from, just as he opened the eyes of those on the Emmaus road when he explained the scriptures. Jesus meets us in the communion or the Lord's Supper with the bread and the wine which symbolize his flesh and his blood as an act of remembrance of what he did for humanity. Remember, he commanded us to engage in that act. But it's not the end. It's not the end because Jesus himself has promised that he is coming again. And he's not coming as a baby next time. Next time he is coming as an all-conquering son of God in judgment to gather those who follow him. Are you ready? If you want to turn to God, there is no need for delay. He is ready and willing to take you as his own right now. You only have to ask him to forgive you, and he will. Being a Christian is a partnership between God and yourself. Deciding to change course in midlife is what is called conversion being born again, or deciding to be a Christian. When you place your faith in Jesus, becoming utterly dependent upon him, you turn to God. Once you have made that decision, you leave behind your rebellion against him. As you live each day, becoming more involved with Jesus day by day, you will find yourself changing. You stop doing things which separated you from him and find yourself doing things that develop your relationship with him. How do you develop this relationship? Until you enter into that relationship, sin, or that which alienates you from God, controls your rebellion against God in your attitudes and your activities. You develop this relationship by allowing God to take control of your life as he asks you to accept his management and guidance of your life. God's point of view and his strength will become your point of view and your source of strength. You tune your mind, will and heart to him for all you do. If you want to make that decisive step right now and become a Christian, there are three simple steps to take. Firstly, admit that you have done wrong against God and his ways and turn away from those actions and attitudes. Secondly, believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Saviour from the consequences of the anger of God towards you and your tendency to sin against him. Call on him, receive, trust, obey and worship him, recognising him for who he is and what he has done for you. Lastly, accept the Holy Spirit of God into your life as the major motivating force for what you do and think. Once sin has been confessed, Jesus is believed in and trusted in as Saviour, and the Holy Spirit has entered your life, then you are a Christian. 
All of these things happen together in a flash as you turn to God. Now you are ready to grow in grace and knowledge of our Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. God has chosen you. Jesus has paid for you and has put his mark within you through the Holy Spirit. Thanks for joining us today on Partakers. Come back every day to www.partakers.co.uk where there is something uploaded as an MP3 to help you as a Christian disciple in the 21st century. Our books are also available at pulptheology.co.uk and on Amazon. See you later. Dave Roberts